you a pirate. Pride, tradition, passion. Be proud of who you are and what you are. You're pirates. When they face adversity, plant their feet, take a brace, hit them right in the jaw, and say, bring it on. Want some, get some. ECU Athletics and U.S. Cellular present The Ruffin McNeil Show. The Ruffin McNeil Show is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the ECU Pirates. And now, in his 25th season, the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Welcome to the Ruff and McNeil Show. We'll have highlights coming up from the Houston game. It was letter winners and Hall of Fame weekend this past weekend on campus at ECU. Always nice to have those folks back in Greenville. Camp Connors will be by as well with another Camp Connors segment. And to look ahead to next week, even though it's an open date week, we'll take a up close and personal look behind the scenes of Pirate football. Ruff joins me right after this. Justin Jones flanked out to the right side. Bodenheimer is there as well. Hardy wide left. Here's Carton looking for it over the middle. Caught by Webster at the five. Made one miss. Stays on his feet. Battles into the end zone. Touchdown Pirates. What a first half for Danny Webster. He catches another pass. We'll be right back with more of the Ruff and McNeil Show, presented by U.S. Cellular and sponsored by Suddenlink. Bundle and save with Suddenlink. Call 1-877-807-3806 today. One passion, one nation. This November, the choice is clear. Pirate Basketball kicks off the 2012 home season November 10th and 11th. Select your season tickets with ballot options like the employment rate, economic stimulus, and women's basketball referendum. Cast the deciding vote on opening weekend November 10th and 11th with a pair of 5 p.m. games in Williams Arena at Minchie's Coliseum. Get your tickets now at ecupirates.com. Ruffin McNeil Show, presented by U.S. Cellular, continues with sponsorship by BB&T, sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Welcome to the Ruffin McNeil Show. Big win for the Pirates. They become bowl eligible. East Carolina with a 48-28 to win over Houston. Played a terrific first half. And Ruff Danny Webster told us after the game that you guys had a great week of practice and really carried over to the game. Well, we did. You know, I thought it began Sunday night. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we just asked him on Friday and this morning to carry over your practice to your play, and I thought he did that. Yeah, they did. A great job. The Pirates came out, uh, had both barrels blazing in that first half. Let's go to those first half highlights. What a beautiful day for football. Just over 45,000 at Downey Ficklin Stadium, Bagwell Field. We pick up action now. The Pirates with their second possession, and on third down and eight, Shane Carden picks up the first down rough. He's really good at this. Boy, he's good. He's, he's uh, really elusive, uh, big down. Good job moving the chains. And then Tay Cooper is uh, the recipient of this pass. It goes for a 33 yards. You like to use Tay coming out of the backfield. Well, he's such a good athlete, soft hands. He understands coverage being a quarterback. So he's a, will, a very good weapon coming out of the backfield. Pirates coming right down the field. Third down and goal from the Houston Six. And Carden hits Danny Webster here. And good to see Danny get this touchdown catch. It really was. Great job by Shane finding Danny. Good job, Danny, getting to the end zone. Pirates lead 7 to nothing. Uh, three downs and out for Houston. They have to punt the ball away as Leon is back to punt. And then Justin Hardy takes this one, Coach, for 41 yards. This was a big play with your special teams. Well, Kirk Dahl, our special teams coordinator, talked about changing field position. Big game-changing play right here. And good job by the guys blocking for Justin. Great run by Justin. Then the Pirates come back with the ball offensively, and Carden then hits Danny Webster on this pass play for 13 yards, and the Pirates are on the board again and quickly off to a 14-0 lead. Uh, it was a good play again. and Again, just good to give uh, get Danny some, some reps and get him back in the groove, and he'll be a viable weapon for us. 14-0 Pirates as we pick up action now in the second quarter, and here is Shane Carden again on a third down and five, the quarterback keeper. He goes uh, for 12 yards, and Ruffy doesn't shy away from contact. He tries to get every inch, doesn't he? Well, he's not afraid of it. He's a warrior, a uh, leader for us, and he does what he needs to to win, the, to, to move the chains or, or make a play for us. So proud of Shane. And then another big play. This time, Derek Harris gets loose down the sideline. Thought he was going to get it into the end zone. Ruff, this was a big one. It goes for 50 yards. There's another play where Shane had to keep his feet and extend the play. And great job by Darius, uh, Derek not, not quitting on the play. Great job running after the catch. 
And then on a second down and goal, here's Carden again, and he throws this one to Danny Webster, and they were hooking up all day long. It was really good. He got off to a great start and a good connection. Danny's a guy that can work one-on-one inside, and good job by Shane going to Danny. Tay Cooper now takes this one, Coach, for 18 yards. He had 33 carries in this game. Oh, boy, he's a workload on him. Don't want to really give him that many carries to get him beat up. You know, we have two games left, but, uh, you know, he can handle it. Tay's a trooper, and he's a warrior as well. 140 yards for Tay Cooper in the game, and then when he needs a little bit of a breather, you bring Reggie Bullock in. Reggie had a good game, too. He had 67 yards. He goes for 12 yards on this one. Well, it's not bad bringing Reggie in as well. Reggie provides a different look, speed, explosion, slasher as well. So, great combination. Derek Harris had a good game, too. This one goes for a first down on a third and seven. That one goes for a 10 yards and keeps the drive alive. And then we see Shane throw a pass complete in the end zone to Reese Wiggins, his first touchdown catch of the year, Coach. Well, you know, we've been, we've been trying to get Reese uh, involved and, and get him down, but great play. It was good to see Reese get in the end zone. He's a guy that can really stretch the edges for us, too, out there. 28 to nothing, Pirates, and then late in the second quarter, Houston comes back, and they hit a big play like they can do. Pylon throws this one complete to Mark Roberts. It goes for 40 yards, and then they get the ball uh, first and goal at the 10-yard line, and Pylon throws this one complete to Larry McDuffie for 10. I know you hated to give this one up. Oh, we hated to give this one up, and I know uh, defensive staff did as well, but, you know, this is a great offense. They moved the ball all year long against everyone, especially the last five games, and so, but we hated to give it up still. So the Pirates go into the locker room at halftime up 28-7. to I know you hated to give up that touchdown late, yeah. Ruff, but I'll tell you what, uh, one of the best first halves these guys have played in a long time. Well, we didn't want to give that last one up. I know uh, defense was disappointed. We thought we played well in, in that first half, and but uh, really a good uh, three sides of the ball coming together. Special teams, great job of setting us up a great field position on both sides of the ball, and offense did a good job moving it. Defense really got after our offense that was very potent and high scoring. Shane Carden with the three touchdown passes to Danny Webster. Pirates had 28 points on the board at halftime. We'll come back and we'll look at those second half highlights right after this. Stay tuned for more of the Ruffin McNeil Show. Brought to you in part by Pizza Hut's $10 Pizza and these local nationwide agents. Welcome back to the Ruff and McNeil show. So Houston goes in. They had a little momentum rough coming out for the second half. Well, they did. You know, to score late is what you want. And I thought it was very important defensively. First, special team-wise, do a great job of covering. And then defensively, getting off the field, forcing them to punt. And, and we did that. So, um, you know, this is an offense that can score. They have uh, the quarterback and the receiver. So we really felt like we had to come out and reestablish our momentum and, re and take it and, and just seize it. And that's what the Pirates did late in the fourth quarter to put the game away. Let's go to those second half highlights. Houston's got the ball as we start the second half, and then this was a controversial call here, Ruff, but the officials got this one right as Shane Ross takes the ball down the sideline, and he didn't break the plane. He lost the ball. It goes through the end zone, and you guys kind of got a break here. Well, you know, it's, it, the break was caused by great effort here by, by Jacoby. And, uh, you know, we really should have made him ta tackle for a minimum game, but great effort by Jacoby. And, you know, great hustle causes great plays, and this is a big play for us. Warren Harvey comes in, kicks the 28-yard field goal, and the Pirates have a 31-14 to lead. Coming back now with the ball with Houston. And, Ruff, I thought this was really a big play in this game. On third down and three, Pylon throws this one complete to Ronnie Williams. And then look at the play that Lamar Ivey makes to keep them from getting his first down. Well, it's a big time play. Good job closing the football. Good tackle by Lamar. Lamar is a really good coverage guy who Brian has has put into our pass coverage defenses and good job by Lamar. Very good job. Pirates get the ball back and Carden then throws this one complete and here's Jabril Solomon for 13 yards. A freshman getting more and more confidence. Yes he is. Uh, he's becoming a, a target of Shane but Shane's learning to distribute the football but good job by Jabril here. And then Shane hits Reese Wiggins. We remember the big plays Reese made last year. He's starting to get back in the flow this year. This one goes for 14 yards. And then Ventavious Cooper goes for 10 yards on this play, Coach. Well, it's perfect time of getting Reese back involved. And good job by Tay uh, right here finishing the play. And Tay's that guy control the clock, and he just methodically, methodically really milks the clock down. We get to the fourth quarter now, and Warren Harvey comes in, kicks the field goal with 12.55 to go in the game. The Pirates go up. 34 to 14, and then we see Houston come right back again, and this is piling to Sweeney. He's their big play guy, and this one goes for 49 yards. Yeah, that was a big play by him, and, you know, we, we, we uh, pressure and, and, and cover him on the back end was a big deal right here. Great connection by those two. And then Pylon throws this 
one complete to Mark Roberts. It goes for five yards and a touchdown. Houston back in the game. It's 34-21 with 11.26 to go. And the Pirates coming back now on second down and seven, needing to put some points back on the board. And Reggie Bullock goes on his biggest run of the day. This one goes for 25 yards. Yeah, it was a good run by Reggie. Good job up front blocking. Brandon's done a great job. Those guys up front, a great run by Reggie. And then we see another field goal attempt by Warren Harvey, and uh, he pushes this one wide just a little bit rough. Yeah, that's unusual for, for Warren. We had to call a timeout right there. May, may have uh, to threw him off balance, but Warren usually makes those. We feel good about Warren. Pirate defense has to come back on the field, and Pyland is incomplete on this pass play to Ronnie Williams. And there again is Lamar Ivey making a good play on this fourth down and ten. They had to go for it here. Yeah, it was a good play, and uh, probably Lamar stepping up right here and doing a good job and against this offense, which is, we know we knew coming in the game could really move the football. Pirates are going to put two more touchdowns on the board late, and Ventavius Cooper, 22 yards. Great play call here, Ruff, and this one, uh, I think, was changed at the line of scrimmage, and Cooper takes it in. It was. You know, Lincoln sent in two plays. Shane did a good job identifying it. Then it all comes down to the offensive line, blocking it up great, and they did, and uh, great run here. Pirates lead 41-21. Pyland is now sacked. A loss of eight on this play. There's Darrell Johnson again, your linebacker from Baltimore. Oh, big time play by Darrell. He's a guy that can make a difference and really need that pressure against a team like Houston. And then to put the icing on the cake here, Pylon's pass is intercepted, tipped, and Ty Holmes comes up with the interception. Coach, one of your backup linebackers, takes it 28 yards to put the game away. I thought it was a great ribbon for how the defense played, how our team played, and uh, Ty to get it, Ty to get that, make that play really was the signature of, of the day. Painted purple, 48-28 Pirates. I mean, I have a great coaching staff, a great bunch of players. They're all supporting, and, and everybody's encouraging me to get back 100%. And, you know, it's finally starting to feel, uh, you know, back to where I used to be. You win a game like this, and there are a lot of uh, heroes and a lot of guys who contribute, and that was the case. A real team effort wasn't rough. Well, it was. You know, I'm uh, really proud of that. The offense, defense did a great job of feeding off one another. Uh, special teams, really the glue that kept both of those two groups together. Really proud of the, the team, the coaching staff, Jeff. Really a resilient bunch. Uh, tough week last week. They came back, bounced back. Really a lot of what I call intestinal fortitude shown by our group. Uh, this off week is coming a great time, and but really proud of our team. Yeah, offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley called a great game, and defensive coordinator Brian Mitchell did as well. And the Pirates did a, a terrific job on both sides of the ball. Coming back with more right after this. The final stats from this week's game are brought to you by your Carolina Chevy dealers. Welcome back to the Ruffin McNeil Show. Hall of Fame weekend this past weekend on campus at ECU. One of the inductees, John Williamson, played baseball for the Pirates in the 90s. And John, welcome back. How does it feel to be in the ECU Hall of Fame? Well, I tell you, Jeff, it's just an honor to be back. And, um, you know, I'm so humbled. It's just, just such a great university. And um, my family's here. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, past coaches and teammates. It's just been a wonderful weekend so far. And, uh, just very honored. When I look at your career, you were Mr. Consistency, weren't you? I think so. I never had any one good year that really stood out, but I think, you know, from freshman to senior is pretty consistent. Yeah, you played a lot because you jumped right in the fire as a freshman, didn't you? And you played four years here. I did, you know, pretty much every game and uh, just had a lot of great teammates I played with. Uh, the staff from Keith DeClaire to Tommy Eason to, you know, you name it. It was just uh, Good time when I was through here. Yeah, good times, good guys, and some really good teams. And, John, let's talk about maybe some of those teams, some of those years that stand out in your mind. Yeah, you know, it, uh, when we made it to the Super Regional in Kinston, uh, I, think we, I think it was one of the first times that I don't know ever or in a while that, you know, we started uh, hosting regionals. Mm -hmm. uh, we started in Wilson, and then we were in Super Regional that year. And um, just a lot of great memories from going down to LSU and playing in Super Regional or Regional down there. And uh, just a lot of good memories. Five, four, three, two. One. Today we're with Trent Tigner. Trent does a great job for us punting. Uh, he's got another year left. He's averaging 42.4 yards of punt with great hang time, so we're very fortunate to have him as our punter this season. Uh, one of the things with our punters and kickers that's very important is their flexibility. 
Uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can improve flexibility. One of the ways that we improve flexibility is with the kettlebell. First thing we're going to do is a pry squat. Let's go ahead and pick up the bell. What Trent's going to do is squat down, force his hips down. He's got his elbows inside. Basically, we're getting a stretch now on the glutes, the hamstrings, and also the groin area. Go ahead and extend up and back down. Second exercise today is what we call the Cossack stretch. So basically what you see here, he's in a very good position with his body, and we're getting the inner part of that leg area, the groin, up high. And sometimes that's a hard area to stretch, so this is also an excellent exercise with the kettlebell for flexibility. Uh, the final exercise in this segment will be the windmill. Uh, what Trent is doing is he's pointing his feet away from the belt. He's going to look at the belt, lock his elbow out. Basically what we're doing here is we're getting flexibility in the torso and also strength in the oblique. He's looking up at the bell, getting a good range of motion and return to the starting position. Okay, Trent did a very good job with those exercises. One of the things that's very positive about Trent that's a little bit unique is he's very active in a large congregation in the community with the youth group. So we're very proud of the work that he does throughout our community as well. Camp Connors is brought to you by these local nationwide agents. Remember, Pirate fans, you can be a part of the show. It's Ask Coach Ruff, powered by U.S. Cellular. Text the word COACH to 94597. You'll be asked to submit your question to Coach Ruff. He'll pick one to answer each week. Here's Coach Ruff. Our first text is from Jeff from Greenville. Coach, do you look forward to the bye week this late in the season, or would you rather have it earlier? Uh, Jeff, i like to have the bye week about midseason, if we could possibly can, but... Uh, we'll take it this, this late. We got some nicks and bruises. We we'll, we'll look forward to the bye week. Thanks, Jeff, for your text, and go Pirates. This week's Look Ahead is brought to you by the Eye Care Center, eye doctors focused on you and the official eye care provider of the Pirates. Welcome back to the show. Well, even though the Pirates do not play this weekend, things are really busy out at the Cliffmore Practice Facility Height Field. Guys working out, and our Brian Meter was there too. Right side, do a great job. Get Rob going. Hey, hey, bounce back time. The bye week can be for bouncing back. It's also a time to reflect on the season, to fix what isn't working, and to fine tune what is. It's also a time to heal those bumps and bruises. That's the time for guys to get extra treatment, uh, you know, rest their bodies, you know, get back from injuries possibly, uh, you know, just, just stay healthy. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for your body to just relax and let it heal a little bit, uh, take the time and uh, get to think about what you need to do. While there have been some lighthearted moments in practice, the players understand the key word for the week is work. With just two games left, it's time to pull out all the stops. Keep working at the same time, you know, we can't let up, but, you know, that's a time that we can kind of get guys back and you know get it, get the team you know 100% healthy so we can be ready for our, our next week. That just gives us you know an extra week to prepare for that next game. We all just came out here uh, Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday just kept working. Uh, we're not worried about it. We put it behind us and we just keep working as a team. With the bye week being this late in the season for the seniors, their reflection goes beyond the season and for that matter, it goes beyond football. You know, it's, it's, it extends beyond just football. You know, we're in there, you know, we're joking together and, you know, we travel together, you know, we're, we're roommates and all that stuff. And, it's, you know, it's, it's just great. It really, it really isn't more than a fraternity. It's really just turns into a family. And finally, time for Pirates in the Pros. Former East Carolina lineman Guy Whipper caught a touchdown pass for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Havelock product showing the great hands as he scooped up the low Blaine Gabbert pass. It was the second career catch for the Jags offensive tackle. The Packers won the game, but former Pirate Guy Wimper has a memory for a lifetime. His first NFL touchdown. I'm Brian Meador for the Ruffin McNeil Show.
Thanks, Brian. Thanks for being with us on the show this week, and we'll see you next week with another report on East Carolina Pirate football. Have a good week, everybody. The Ruffin McNeil Show has been presented by U.S. Cellular. Hello better. The Ruffin McNeil Show is an exclusive presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.